A rapper would be gunned down in broad daylight after he posted this on Twitter. At first glance, you might not be able to tell what exactly is going on in the images or why it would have potentially gave said rapper a huge target on his back. But when we deep dive into the backstory of the circumstances surrounding the images, something much darker is revealed. So, let's rewind the clock. New this morning, San Antonio police are searching for a suspect responsible for shooting and killing a man overnight. Jim says Alyssa Cole joining us live from outside the apartment complex just a couple blocks from the studio. So Alyssa, what are police telling you? Yes, Max, Sarah, they're telling me right now at this very hour, they're still working to locate the suspect responsible for the incident here on the 700 block of McCullough out or just at the Augusta flat apartments. Now, this is what police are telling us inside this building is where they found a man dead. They believe to he's the, identified to believe it be in his 30s. They found him with multiple gunshot wounds inside his own apartment. Now, police say neighbors nearby heard those loud gunshots and immediately call police. They didn't get a description of the suspect, but investigators are working with property management to acquire surveillance video. Now, once police get a chance to review the tape, they're hoping to positively identify the suspect responsible for what they describe as a very deadly crime. If you have any information on this crime, visit our website to get the information for Crime Stoppers on KSAT.com. Reporting live downtown, Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. On the 4th of February, 2020, Reports emerged that police were called to an apartment complex on the 700 block of McCullough Street in San Antonio, Texas. When they arrived at around 11.25 p.m., 34-year-old Omar Richardson was found dead after suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. From what was understood, initial reports stated that Omar had been shot in his own home and the gunman was still at large. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was all that came from that story. No other details were widely available. With no follow-up, it meant either the gunman was still at large and police were preparing to put an appeal out or there were details not known to the public and the case had been resolved. The latter proved true. Well, number one, I'm glad you're safe. You had a very, very traumatic situation that recently happened. Um, so I want to go ahead and, and get into this whole situation. So all this happened in San Antonio. Yeah. Yeah, I say. Okay, so tell me exactly what happened leading up to the situation. That's 26-year-old Darrell Gentry, known better as rapper BTB Savage, an emerging scam rapper hailing from Cleveland, Ohio, although he had spent the past few years living in San Antonio, Texas. By the time this interview dropped with Vlad TV, he had already been caught up in a $1 million scam whilst serving with the US Army in South Korea. But luckily for him, he struck up a deal where he had to give a portion of the money back and was eventually banned from the country. Therefore, he served no prison. In time. It isn't hard to see then, after scamming through his early adulthood, that scam rap was his lane when it came to making music after leaving the military. Darrell had started to make a name for himself in the San Antonio area, not just from the music, also his lavish lifestyle that he flexed on Instagram. And it would be exactly that which would be the catalyst for the events that would take place on February 4th, 2023. On the day in question, Darrell had received a message from a fellow artist in the city, currently unnamed. They wanted to collab. The artist was going to give Darrell some money for the feature. It was late when he messaged, around 9pm, and so Darrell told him he would message him the following day and go to an actual recording studio. After all, he had no equipment at his apartment. He felt something was slightly off about the situation as well because every time Darrell would give a reason as to why he couldn't record the song, he had an answer for it. For example, when Darrell said he had no specific equipment to get the song done, the artist would say that he had it. Maybe he was just slightly paranoid because he had been diagnosed with PTSD from his time in the army. Or maybe, just maybe, there was something more to it. In the end, though, Darrell gave in. He wanted to get the situation over and done with so he could get the money and move on with his life. A time was arranged for 11pm. His girlfriend, who was present, wasn't too happy that strangers were coming over. So the artist would turn up to Darrell's with his uncle, 34-year-old Omar Richardson, and a car full of people. Let's get this done. Omar and his nephew went inside. As they entered the apartment, Darrell knew instantly that something was off. His instincts were right. According to his own testimony, the pair started to look around the apartment in places they shouldn't really have been. If they were there to record a song, then why were they doing so? Spoiler alert, 
they weren't there to record the song. Over the next few moments, music equipment was being set up, but out of nowhere, the collab artist told Darrell that he didn't have all of the equipment on him, so he'd have to go back to the car to get the rest, and so off he went to get the equipment. Upon leaving, Darrell locked the door. Now, you haven't got to do all that. We're here to record some music. I've been getting money. We're not here on no weird-ish. I got PTSD. I always lock the door. I don't want no random people walking in. Tensions then slightly calmed between Omar and Darrell. A conversation soon ensued about Darrell's jewelry. How much did that chain cost? Who's your jeweler? As Darrell looked down at his chest and picked up his chain, Omar produced a firearm and told him to hand it over. Man, you got me effed up. If you don't run that, I'ma shoot you. You serious right now? Hurry up or I'll shoot your girlfriend. I see you flexing on Instagram and all that. Where's all that stuff? Look, here's the chain, take it. As Omar was reaching out for the chain, Darrell sprung into action and placed Omar in a hold where he couldn't shoot the firearm directly towards him. When the initial shots rang out, they missed. Eventually, Omar dropped the gun and a tussle ensued. In the end, it was Darrell's girlfriend who managed to grab the firearm and so she shot Omar twice in his back. Now, before you think this incapacitated him, it had in fact made him stronger. He turned into Hulk. From here, Omar produced two more firearms he had concealed and attempted to open fire on Darrell's girlfriend whilst he wrestled with him. Shoot through the door. The artist, along with the other people in the car, had been waiting outside the whole time in case anything went wrong in the robbery. Various shots then rang out. Darrell's girlfriend shot back, firing twice. The shot stopped. In other words, they fled the scene. Her attention moved back to the tussle. Shoot him, shoot him. She shot, but hit Darrell in the elbow. It completely shattered. She did eventually hit Omar in the chest, and although he was weak, he was still putting up a fight. As Darrell, his girlfriend, and baby were about to flee the scene, Omar had crawled over to a firearm that had been left on the floor, and he tried to shoot towards the baby. But Darrell sprung into action, and everyone was safe. My back's hurting. Don't let me die, bro. I got kids too. Help me make it out of here. I don't give a F about you. I hope you die. The three then fled. Omar was left to die at the scene. And so, no charges were ever placed against Darrell or his girlfriend after the facts of the case were established. But just because he wasn't in trouble with the law didn't mean that no target was put on his back. To make matters worse, he would go on to mock the situation, potentially marking himself for death. The images you see on your screen right now, the ones you saw at the start of the video, are of Darrell back at his apartment a short while after the shooting occurred. He's standing in Omar's blood. The exact location where he's standing in the images is where Omar would eventually bleed out to death by the door. Those images were kept to himself for nearly two months, but would eventually be shared to social media on the 30th of March, 2023. And only hours after they were posted, Darrell himself would be shot dead in Houston, Texas. The search continues for two suspects accused of killing a young man in the River Oaks area. It's a story KPRC2 first broke last night at 10. But questions still remain about what happened on mid lane uh, near San Felipe in the River Oaks area. KPRC2's Rochelle Turner is there asking questions. Rochelle, what are police and neighbors saying about this? Lisa, police and residents who live by are not saying much about this drive-by shooting that left a 26-year-old man dead. Now, many residents told me they heard gunshots, and police believe the shooting was targeted, and they are hoping that surveillance video will capture the people responsible. Take a look at this video surveillance from a neighbor. You can see a white Mercedes followed by a black Subaru SUV heading northbound on mid lane and broad daylight. Police say the victim was driving the Mercedes and two suspects were inside the SUV. The suspects opened fire on the victim and he died at the scene. Witnesses told police the suspect fled the scene. There is speculation that the victim is a rapper from the Cleveland area, but Houston police have not confirmed any information. Again, no arrests have been made in this case. I did reach out to the victim's family and friends, but I have not heard back. As of news time, if you know anything about this shooting, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. Their number, 
TIPS. Remember, you can remain anonymous and any information leading up to an arrest, you can receive a reward up to $5,000. Houston police tell me they will continue investigating and looking at surveillance video. Reporting live in River Oaks, I'm Rochelle Turner, KPRC 2 News. And so quite literally only hours after posting the pictures, Darrell was shot dead after being riddled with bullets. Although we can't say for certain if this had anything to do with Omar's death, it wouldn't be too irrational to suggest that it was, especially with the online social media antics. If that was the case, it just goes to show you that as quick as you think you can make it, you can fall. Especially when you've took someone's life, even if you was in the right. Somebody out there potentially wants revenge. This was supposed to be his moment but it was cut short. Right now, it isn't clear on how the shooters tracked him down or who the shooters even were, but police have stated that this was an organized hit. So we'll have to wait for more details to emerge. I have standing with me a uh, special agent in charge, uh, Jim Smith, our gang uh, commander, Cephas, and our knight, uh, Lieutenant Croson. So approximately uh, 6, 10 p.m., uh, we received a call for service, uh, the shooting in progress, a drive-by shooting in the 2100 block of Mid Lane. As officers arrived, uh, they quickly located African-American male, uh, which appears to be in his mid-20s, deceased on the scene. Uh, he was driving a white Mercedes vehicle. Uh, witnesses state that um, a black, newer model, um, Mitsubishi, SUV type vehicle with dark windows uh, came up on the vehicle, uh, began to fire. Uh, two suspects got out. Um, the only thing we have on them are they were dressed in black, all black with hoodies, possibly shades on. Uh, they fled either eastbound or westbound on San Felipe. Uh, that's all we have here. I could tell you there was a number of shots fired. Um, as evident by the casings that's on the ground. Um, we do believe this is a targeted uh, incident. Uh, we don't know, don't have a lot of details. It's an active investigation. Uh, we are, as we normally do, reviewing surveillance cameras, uh, private and businesses. But I do ask the public, if you see something, have you seen something out on this scene, or you know something, please do. Uh, we don't know the victim, don't know who he is, but we do know that he has a family, and I think it's always important that we say uh, and ask the city to pray for the family. But again, um, and I want to thank the residents over here and the business owners. Everybody's been uh, very supportive, but you can imagine the stress and the level of stress when something happens like this at you know 6, 6 p.m. Uh, or just a little bit after 6 p.m. But again, it's uh, a targeted incident. It's, it's, it's uh, and, and, and I think that's important for everybody to know. Uh, we'll open up for questions. Did you, did you say what kind of weapons were used? I'm not sure. Um, I, I didn't uh, look at them on, on the scene as they're processing it right now, but uh, multiple, multiple uh, shots fired out here. What, what do you think the connection was between the victim and the suspect? I have no idea right now, and I don't want to speculate, but uh, I can tell you something. A, a number of uh, uh, individuals, are working on this, and I have my partner here uh, um, as my partner in crime, and I say it, um, our great relationship we have, and, and not only with uh, 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 Special Agent in Charge Smith, all our other federal partners and our local partners. And I just want to say this, uh, we've got a great city with a lot of great citizens, and I've said it before, um, you harm somebody, you kill somebody in our city, uh, no stone left unturned, we're coming after you. So uh, anybody that knows anything, get us the information. But uh, we're hard at work uh, trying to find out who's responsible for this. Was he, was he at the bank? Did you take no, out? no, just here, right here on the street in 2100 block. Um, so he was actually northbound um, when the vehicle approached and began shooting. So why is the FBI here? That's my partner. That's my partner. And they, they're the lending support. I don't want to talk, speak for him. And he, he might want to say, say a few words. Maybe but I yeah. Yeah, in a lot of these cases, whether it be a drive-by or some of these murders that we believe that we can bring our resources and to assist, we will do that with the FBI. Um, the public doesn't really know that we're behind the scenes supporting our partners. 
uh, and it's not just here, around the country and around the world, we, we support our partners. And so, a lot of crimes out there. We, we are supporting our partners, we're behind the scenes, and we're bringing our tools to the fight because things such as this, this drive-by shooting just can't happen. It just cannot happen in the community. It doesn't matter where it is in the city of Houston or in any of the other areas. It just can't happen like this without us assisting our partners to try to bring this to an end. One correction, too, on the vehicle. Um, it's a black uh, Subaru. I think I said Mitsubishi, but a Subaru. That's what we believe. And uh, as scenes are fluent, things change, but that's what we believe at this time, okay? And you said the men got out of the car and opened fire. At one, at one point, they could have shot from the vehicle or whatnot. The, the fact is, multiple shots. So they did get out at one point. So, yeah. Was the victim's vehicle stopped, or were they, did they... Talk to us about how that interaction works. I'm not sure. Um, you know, because stories and, and it changes. I want to wait until we get full surveillance of it. And sit, but at some point, they approached him in the 2100 block here and began shooting. I don't know if they cut him out, boxed him in, or whatever. But uh, that's that's part of the investigation. And as we get uh, more footage and get a chance to review it, we'll put it out. And what makes you believe it was targeted? Uh, based on our, our experience and it's a few things that I, I just don't want to go into right now, uh, it's not random. Yeah. Okay. Anything Craig, else? Craig, you, had, you didn't have an ID on the victim. Do you believe that his wallet and ID have been taken by the shooters, or maybe he didn't? Oh, I don't. I don't think so. But uh, we had. Uh, when you come up on a, a deceased individual, we have to wait for the medical examiners to come and, and uh, the investigation on the scene, and then we. Uh, try to identify that individual, okay? All right, thank y'all, all right.